Hello everyone and welcome. Can you drive 1,000 miles in an electric car in one day? So I think a lot of people, uh, their main complaint with electric cars is like, hey, you can't actually take it on a road trip. And you know, I've been on several road trips in my Tesla and I honestly think it's fine on road trips, but I think what people mean when they say you can't take it on a road trip is that it takes significantly longer, right? Because you have to stop and charge the car. And so that means you can't travel as far in the same amount of time. So I was curious, you know, could I actually make it a thousand miles, which to me seems like a ridiculous length to drive in one day, but can you make it a thousand miles in one day in an electric car? Because if you can, well, then it's probably good enough for a lot of people. And I actually asked all of you guys, uh, hey, what do you think, you know, how far are you willing to drive in a day? And surprising number of you responded. Uh, thank you all so much for responding. 165,000 of you answered this question of mine. Uh, and of that 165,000, which is a very nice amount of data, thank you for the very large sample size. Uh, but of that, you know, 90 some percent uh, were saying, you know, 91% uh, we're within that zero to 1,000 mile range on about 60% under 500 miles, which I was a bit surprised to see because I, you know, if I'm driving somewhere, I just kind of just drive endlessly until I get there. Um, but it looked like a large percentage of people, you know, don't even want to drive over 500 miles in a day. Now, I do recognize uh, that miles and time are not the same thing, right? So like uh, one of the comments that I liked was someone said like, hey, you know, I, I usually like to drive about eight hours, uh, which is about 500 miles. Um, so I'm not, you know, trying to deceive people by asking a, a distance rather than a time, but a thousand miles just seems like a lot, right? And if, you know, 60% of people say they don't want to drive 500, more than 500 miles in a day, and I can drive a thousand in an EV in a day, well, since that that's double that, that's probably good enough for that group of people, right? And that's just kind of what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what percentage of people do EVs make sense for? I think the only big challenge, really, for EVs is if you don't have a place to charge at home, they don't make any sense to buy. Um, aside from that, I think even for these road trip scenarios, they make a ton of sense. And that's kind of what I sought out to prove with this. Uh, so the question is, could I actually make it a thousand miles in one day? Well, unfortunately, the answer is no. I only made it 973 miles. So yes, you can travel a thousand miles in a day. Um, why did I stop at 973? Well, I got to my hotel, the hotel that I was planning to get to. I was driving to Los Angeles. I was gonna meet this guy named Jay uh, there in Los Angeles. And I got to my hotel and I was like, 973, good enough. Most channels, you know, most YouTube channels, they've probably been like, yeah, I gotta drive another 30 miles to actually prove a point. This isn't most channels, all right? This is engineering explained, where good enough is, well, it's good enough. Now, I do wanna say that I think regardless of whether you're driving a combustion vehicle or an electric vehicle, driving a thousand miles in a day kinda of sucks. I mean, it's not really gonna be that enjoyable of a day. One of the things that I kind of liked about doing it in this Tesla is that it forces those stops and it forces you to get out of the car and walk around for a little bit and stretch your legs. And in doing so, you know, I never felt like tired or uncomfortable um, from the trip. So the thousand miles went by and it was like, hey, that wasn't so bad. Like I wasn't like in pain um, which is what I do when I drive my cross track. Like I don't take any time for breaks. I just drive, right? And, and so it's like all about getting there. And then when I get there, I'm like, man, that wasn't very pleasant at all because I spent all that time literally just sitting in a chair and not taking any breaks. Uh, so those force breaks actually kind of help you arrive in a little bit better of a mood, uh, though of course slightly longer time to get there. So how long did it take? Well, again, there were a lot of comments talking about, hey, you can drive about 500 miles in eight hours. Um, and that was about my pace. There, People are talking, you know, combustion cars here, but that was about my pace with an electric car. So total driving time was 16 and a half hours and, you know, drove about uh, 1,000 miles. And so I was driving an average of about 60 miles per hour, including time spent charging. So, you know, 60 miles an hour, eight hours of driving, that's 480 miles. So about 500 miles in eight hours. So of that 16 and a half hours of driving, 14 hours and six minutes were spent actually driving, and then two hours and 24 minutes were spent charging. So for about every six minutes that I was driving, I had to spend one minute charging. In other words, you drive for about two hours and then you charge for about 20, 25 minutes, then you drive for another two hours, you charge for about 20, 25 minutes, and you repeat. 
Now, in total, I made six stops to charge, uh, and the average stop was 24 minutes in length. Uh, so six total stops over those thousand miles, 24 minutes each time, and honestly, it goes by really quick. Like, you stop, you go to the bathroom, you stay well hydrated because you know you're gonna stop again in two more hours. Uh, you grab a snack, whatever you wanna do, you walk around a little bit, you mess around on your phone for a second, and before you know it, 24 minutes have gone by, your car is charged and ready to go. And so for me, and this wasn't purely intentionally, but for me what happened this trip is I basically kept the battery between 80 and 20%. So I was using that 60% window from 20 to 80% for most, on average, that's where I was keeping the battery. I'd arrive with about 20% um, and I'd charge up to about 80% and then I'd take off, drive for another two hours uh, and, then, and then repeat that process. Now my average driving speed, I mean I was driving you know, 75, 80 miles an hour uh, while on the highway, my average driving speed while actually driving for those 14 hours and six minutes was about 70 miles an hour, uh, but including the charging, my average speed was about 60 miles an hour. So how much energy did this require? Well, about 286 kilowatt hours. Uh, in other words, about four full battery packs. Uh, and I was able to actually check out some 250 kilowatt chargers uh, where it charges at a rate of like over a thousand miles uh, per hour of range added per hour of like time spent charging. You can actually look at the screen and actually watch the charging percentage go up. Like it's wild how fast uh, those chargers are, especially looking at the time it took uh, my car to go from like 7% uh, to 67%. Very impressive looking at the average charge times there. And overall, this 286 kilowatt hours of battery charging cost me $88.72. So if you were to compare that to a gasoline car, say 30 miles per gallon, gas at $3 a gallon, uh, you know, that's about $100 to travel 1,000 miles. So very comparable to, you know, a decently efficient gasoline car. The thing is, uh, charging on the road is more expensive than at home. So at home, it's about half the price. So you could cut that, uh, you know, cost to yourself in half if you are charging at home. Also, I think it's a little silly to compare this to, you know, a reasonably efficient gasoline car. From a performance standpoint, like this car has 500 horsepower, right? So if you compare it to a 500 horsepower sports sedan that's getting 20 miles per gallon and requiring premium gas at $4 a gallon, well then in that case, you know, it's $200 to drive a thousand miles rather than a hundred dollars. So then the Tesla looks uh, significantly more, uh, you know, better from a price standpoint. Now, my average efficiency for the trip was 293 watt hours per mile, which to me seemed a little high, um, all things considered. Uh, but then looking at the EPA rating, that's nearly identical to the, the fueleconomy.gov's rating, uh, 29 kilowatt hours per 100 miles driven, and I'm at you know 29.3, so almost exactly what its highway rating is uh, for that trip. Now, some of the things that were kind of interesting about this road trip, First of all, the navigation estimation was a bit strange. So almost every time I was about to stop to charge, I'd be about a mile away from the supercharger and it would tell me that I had about 30 minutes left of driving in order to get to that supercharger. And it did it nearly every single time and I couldn't understand why because there wasn't traffic or any weird scenario. It was just like something with the software was saying, hey, it's gonna take you 30 minutes to travel a mile and of course it only took like a minute to travel that mile and then I'd get there and it'd be like, oh, you're here, uh, which was a little weird. Now, overall, the navigation, when I started it in the morning, which I started very early, I plugged in, uh, you know, the final destination, this hotel that I stayed at, and it told me I would arrive there at 8.27 uh, p.m. And I actually arrived there at 8.35 p.m. So I thought that was very impressive how close, I mean, it was within 10 minutes, the estimate that the computer predicted. Uh, so that was very good for the trip overall, though for every little charging stop, for some reason it would add like 20 to 30 minutes to it, uh, which didn't make any sense to me. One of the things that seems like it has changed, and maybe this was just because I was driving through California where there's so many more superchargers, but it would have me charge up to 20% before I'd start going to the next charger. And in the past, it would tell me to leave when I'd get like five or 10% to get to the next charger remaining in my battery. And this time it would give me a little bit more of a safety buffer. So maybe Tesla's changing that because more people are getting into it, uh, into Teslas, and they wanna make that buffer a little bit safer and less people getting stranded. Uh, but I like that it gives you about a 20% buffer, you know, to that next charger. I'm generally fairly comfortable if it says 15% or more, um, and 
you're, you're going to be fine and you're, you'll arrive, but uh, it gives you about a 20% buffer. And this time it wasn't having me charge up into the 90s. I was just charging to about 80% and that was what it was actually recommending. So it seems like they've started to adapt a little bit smarter of a charging strategy with the navigation system. Because it takes so long to charge up to 100%, it makes sense to stop around 80% and then just hit the next charger. Now I wanna talk a little bit about some of the things that I really like and some of the things that I don't like about this car because I never actually planned on keeping it this long. I kinda of just wanted to have a little project experiment, see what it's like uh, living with a Tesla and then sell it and move on to a different electric car because I like trying out different cars out there. Uh, but I really like, you know, and one of the biggest things is just Tesla's charging infrastructure. It's just way ahead of everyone else right now. And because of that, it's just a very easy charging experience um, and it's simple to use and it just works and and that is kind of the beautiful thing and, and they have a lot of charging stops um, a lot of superchargers out there so it makes it really reasonable to travel to most locations not absolutely everywhere but most locations in the United States are pretty well covered but on top of that there's a lot of little things that they do with this car that just make me really want to keep it um, one of the things I really like is the security of the front trunk so, you know, the thing is, and you've probably seen other YouTubers that have had their cars, you know, the windows smashed in and people steal their gear. Um, and, and that's actually happened to me. I, thankfully, I didn't have any gear in the car, but they smashed, you know, the windows to my Crosstrek and tried to steal whatever was in it. Uh, there wasn't much in it. And also, I don't know why you have to smash two windows to get inside of a car. You only need to smash one. So if you're going to steal from people, just smash one window. Don't smash both their windows. Anyways, just like kind tip uh, if you're a thief. Um, and so the thing is with the Tesla, the front trunk, you can lock it. And then if you walk away from the car and then the car locks, there's actually no way to get in it. If the car is locked and the battery is charged, that front trunk uh, is going to remain closed. So you can smash a window, you can get inside here and you're not gonna be able to open the front trunk. There's no manual way to do it. And so ultimately, like if someone wants to steal from you, they can do it, right? It's all about just making it as difficult and as tedious of a process as you can. And in this case, there's gonna be a camera recording you. Uh, you'd have to like, you know, either, you know, use a crowbar and like wedge your way into the front or actually cut into it with like a grinder uh, to steal whatever's in there uh, and hopefully there's actually something in there and you don't waste all that time being recorded um, but you know so from a security standpoint I really like the front trunk very secure setup on this uh, I also really like that you have these eight cameras that with the sentry mode so when your car is parked it will record you know if someone bumps into your car or something like that uh, and you also have the dash cam that's always recording. So you just hit a button on the screen and you know it records the last 10 minutes of your driving and you can save that if you get in an accident or someone does something to your car, whatever it may be. Uh, so I really like those from a security standpoint. I also just really like their navigation system. I mean, it's a giant screen with a big map on it. It's using Google Maps. Google Maps is great. Um, so really nice navigation system. You don't have a lot of screen lag. Like, I don't know why we're using ancient computers in all but a very few amount of cars out in the world. Um, modern cars, you know, 2021 model year and the computer used for the infotainment system is from like 1940. It's like, why do we have such ancient material and such laggy screens in modern cars? Let's, let's do away with that nonsense. And so having, once you get used to that and then you go try out another car, you're like, oh, this is terrible, you know? And like, thankfully Apple CarPlay helps a lot where, you know, with modern cars, you can just use your phone, but it's still a bummer that in so many modern cars we have terrible infotainment systems and Tesla does a good job. You've got Spotify, you've got nice maps. Um, I don't like the update that they did where they made the display of the car way bigger. It's like, I don't need to see what car I'm driving. I know what car I'm driving. Uh, so I wish there was like a full screen map mode or something like that, or you could minimize uh, this silly animation of the car itself. Uh, but overall, the screen is fantastic, the response is fantastic, and the voice control works really well with it which doesn't seem like a lot to ask for, but a lot of cars are not good at doing that. So there's a good number of things that I really like about this car, but don't get me wrong, like it has plenty of drawbacks as well. One of the things that drives me crazy are the automatic wipers. First of all, the automatic wipers, the, the setting is all done through the screen, right? So the wiper settings all through the screen, that's a bit annoying. Um, I wish there was a stock so you can do it quickly, not think about it. Um, but the, the wiper settings are through the screen and then the automatic wipers just aren't that good. They're not that great when it's light rain. If it's like a nice heavy rain, they generally will figure it out. Uh, but if it's kind of inconsistent, they struggle. And also, please fix this Tesla. If it is raining at all, like even a slight little rain, and you put the car in reverse, 
the wipers just go nuts. They just go nuts. And you're like, I'm backing up. I don't even need to see that way. And the wipers are going absolutely crazy. It does it every single time I back into my garage when it's raining. The front wipers just go insane. And it's like, yo, chill out, front wipers. Um, so the wiper, the automatic wipers are a little finicky. Rear visibility isn't all that awesome. I wish there was kind of a blind spot monitoring system that wasn't like, look at this little, you know, uh, animation here of the car that might be next to you or might not be next to you. It'd be cool if like when you use your turn signal, it could show you the camera so you could see who's beside you. Um, that would be neat if they incorporated that or some better form of a blind spot monitoring system because honestly, it is a pretty big blind spot, even to your right, like seeing if you're merging there. Um, if it's like a, a low down car, it's fairly hard to see. Another thing that's kind of annoyed me, and it didn't at first, but it started to more over time, is just that the range doesn't match what Tesla says, right? And like Tesla said when this car came out, the range is 310. Uh, and in reality, it's more like 250. And if you sit there and you do the math and you take the highway MPG rating and you calculate it out, it gives you a range of like 250. Um, so the thing is, it's like, who cares about a city range, right? Like driving 300 miles within a city takes like literally all day. So like, who cares? But driving on a highway, you can eat up, you know, 250 miles pretty quickly, 300 miles pretty quickly. And so that's actually important. Highway range is important. So I wish we were more clear about highway range uh, rather than just giving this random range that's like, okay, here's your combined range is how far, far you'll get per battery. And it's like, well, not really, because you're not going to use 100% of the battery. And also, if you're driving on the highway, it's going to be less than that because you're not getting any regen or not much regen, I should say. So overall, yes, there are downsides and my carbon fiber spoiler is always coming off. Uh, so I think, you know, eventually I'm just gonna take that thing off and leave it off because it's just not meant to be. But as, as there are downsides to this car, uh, I think overall it's it's very impressive. You know, can is an electric car feasible uh, for most people's road trip driving concerns? Uh, and the fact that I, by myself, can drive a thousand miles in a day without you know autopilot or anything like that yes i can make it a thousand miles in a day and yes it's the entire day 16 and a half hours uh, which only leaves you seven and a half hours to sleep um but but it can be done right a thousand miles can be done in electric car in a day and i think that's pretty impressive i think considering how new electric cars are the fact that the gap to combustion engines as far as road trip performance is concerned is so small that to me is very impressive where you know we're, we're really just getting started with electric cars so i find it very neat thank you all so much for watching if you have any questions or comments of course feel free to leave those below